to be problematic because you're not mass producing it. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's something that we don't want to like, like just talk and talk your ears off because it is covered so many times and everybody's got a say on it. And um, we've linked a bunch of resources on the bottom of this page and, and it comes up like every week in our Valley International. Hey guys, I'm doing this banner, you know. So, all right. So what do you want to sell at uh, cons? And by the way, guys, feel free to ask questions, um, raise your hands, or stories. And if we're doing these kind of out of order. And okay, so when you're planning, when you say, hey, I want to have a, a table at Mexicon, you kind of need to have an idea of stuff to sell. Um, a lot of artists are different. Heidi and I have very different approaches to what we sell. But some common things are mini comics. They can either be um, like garage print, where you go down to Office Max, Office Depot with your files and have it printed and then you assemble it at home with a stapler. Or you can send it off to companies like Kablam to get it more professionally printed. There's Charms, Button, other cheap impulse buys, which are great for the teenagers. Um, you can produce a lot. If you have a button machine or if you're making tricky ink charms, you can make one of everything and see what sticks. If you're doing nice acrylic charms that you send out, that's a bigger investment. You need to Get that money. 
the table, you may not ever see that money. Mm-hmm. And the faster you can get them done, the cheaper and easier you can make your style, the more you're going to make on them. If you're going to spend two hours on a commission, you're not making it back. Uh, if, you, if you're selling it for two hundred dollars, you're not making it back. Uh, if you can do that thing in ten minutes and you're charging ten bucks for it, you know how many of those can you do all weekend? Quite a few. And keep in mind, as fast as you are, like I do my little five dollar sketches in ten minutes at home. That's in my home. No one's in to me. I have TV on. It's like a nice, appropriate level. Everything is perfect. It's like a little climate control wonder zone of work. I get to the con. I've got bless their hearts. Kids are so excited about it. They come back every five minutes. Even though I told them, I will text them and put it at the front of the table when it's ready. Every five minutes. Is it done? Is it done? Is it my turn? Is it me? And you would think that wouldn't, because each trend, each of those interactions takes five seconds. But it's so constant that it makes what would take me five, ten minutes to do at home take forty minutes, sometimes even an hour, because I'm also making other sales. Or you know, you have to, you're selling something else. You got fish under the table mm-hmm. to find because everything's shifted because you got no room behind the table. Mm-hmm. Or fish under the table and your con partner is like, hey, I ran out of the page protectors. Can you get me some? And you're like, yeah, sure. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I borrowed them from you so many times. Yes. Um, Wait, and- we didn't cover the most important thing. Do not, do not overbook yourself. If you do overbook yourself, have a contingency plan. Um, I no longer take the mini watercolors at cons to do them at the cons anymore because it's, it's so damp here, it will never dry. So what I do is I get the mailing address for the people who want those and then I comp the mailing. I have that kind of padded into the cost. And they know that at the start. I say, I'm not gonna be able to finish this at the con. I'll send it to you next week. About two hours before the alley closes, I just stopped taking them because I know I won't be able to necessarily finish them. I can't promise to finish that day. Um, then I just take them back tomorrow morning and we'll just start the listening. Uh, as for things that aren't commissions, um, we're both mostly 2D artists. We don't do a whole lot of uh, crafty things. So when we're talking about getting stuff made, we're generally talking about prints, comics, that kind of thing. Uh, but she does buttons, I do bookmarks. And um, I've done charms. And I have done, I've had experience with a friend who's done like the tails and stuff like that. I used to do the Kanzashi or hair. Um, so what we're going to say is generally going to apply to prints and 2D arts, but we know a little bit about 3D and you can always um, add. We'll try to cover it as well. Um, home printers, uh, I have a nice photo printer. I can print stuff on that, but yes, she said printer ink costs a lot. If you're getting like, I have a Canon, you can get the Canon brand ink. I added up once almost eight thousand dollars per gallon of ink. Uh, yeah, you can, you can get the knockoff brand, but it sometimes bleeds and leaks all over. Or it runs out really fast. Mm-hmm. Or it's just the wrong color. Everything's faded. Yeah, but that's a good way to start when you don't know what will sell and you only got a few things. Um, office stores, Office Depot, etc. Snacks, mm-hmm. staples. Um, they'll print things for you. Sometimes the quality can be spotty. They're getting better. Um, if you find an office supply store that prints your stuff right the first time, keep giving them your business yes, and, and find them the yeah, 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 and be like, this is the employee that knows. Hey, you're smart. Yes. Always this, when do you work next? Um, Make friends with your office yeah, supply store. You, you, you can kind of, kind of say, okay. um, But you do want to know how to format stuff. Generally, they like PDFs uh, the best. Um, and if I have run into staff that really do not want, know what they're doing. I'm like, Thank you. 
depends on the artist. Yeah. Um, but they have a kind of a cool way to order like a thousand. I recommend against that to minute. Most of the people I know have had problems with them. Maybe not everybody. Um, if you have kind of like poor hand strength, using the hand punches is very difficult. You may need a stronger friend to help you out if you want to go that route. And then the bottom picture is us making books. Assembling books. Yeah. This and is what we mean by garage printing. We have a bone folder. We have a paper cutter. We have a, a long stapler. We have a ruler. We have knives. And we get to work. And then there's cat print. And you really can't read the order details. Uh, but it was, I got 40 prints. Uh, paid $26 for the prints. Uh, $13 for shipping. So cat prints. It's free, 
so, yeah. and I apologize, it is a ton of information. Um, this is, you know, 25 years total of our my experience condensed, and, and we don't know where you guys are coming from. So and trying to everything. So this is my year of cons. I've done over 13 of them, just one year of them. Yeah. Um, you do want to have free things. You always want to have business cards, uh, preferably ones that I think come back with. I recognize this. I met you with this commissioner. I saw you last year. That's, that's always good. Repeat customers sell. It's true. Recognizable branding also sells. I'm Natto Sue. Do I like Natto? No, I don't like Natto, but I've been Natto Sue since I was 16 years old. I've got the Twitter, I've got the Tumblr, I've got the Live Journal, I've got the Facebook, I've got the, what's the word, Blogspot. I've got everything in fact but the Gaia, because somebody sitting on that account won't let me have it. <laughs> Once you find a name that works for you and doesn't have random numbers in it, what? <laughs> or a bunch of X's. You can also just use your real name, especially if it's not a super common name or you have a catchy nickname. My students, my way too common, but it's what I got. Um, and then cute, clever things work well. Um, and, and However, they also get copy. Yeah. Uh, there will be so many, you know, otaku productions that, that you'll see at every. You also look for Kalai! And then enter yeah. some adjective there. Yeah. Uh, you also want to have an online presence. They tie hand in hand. It's true. I guess I'm the one who gets to talk about it because I'm the one who uh, who does it. I have a blog. The blog is um, it does promote my art somewhat. The big focus is art education, teaching people things. We went to art school. We paid a lot of money to go to art school. Too much money to go to art school. You don't need to pay that kind of money to go to art school. The internet is an amazing place where you can find this information, and I try to contribute to that because it, it promotes a healthy community, right? Um, Unfortunately, I'm noticing that people will read my marker reviews. They love my marker reviews. It is a big hit, and it doesn't mean any. It doesn't generate any revenue for me. Um, also, have a Tumblr that I post art to, and then I'm chatting on. I have a Twitter where I connect with other artists, and we collaborate on cons. Um, we have a sub Tumblr, how to be a con artist.com, that we formed with another scad kid, um, where we talk about conventions and we rate conventions. Oh, bless you. Thank you. From like the artist. It's just not good for the artists, and we don't want to see other artists get kind of taken advantage of. What? Oh, um, so it's also important to Google yourself. Um, Google your handle and Google your own name. And you, 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 not the you up north who's been divorced twice and has an outstanding warrant for their arrest. You should be who comes up first because you should be posting often, at least once a week, ideally once a day, unique content. Even if it's just a sketch, there's so many sketch a day blogs that do quite well. Uh, that's an example of my blog, and underneath it is an example of Heidi. I, the only ads on my blog are stuff that leads to me or stuff that leads to friends of mine with comics and or who make art. I don't think Heidi has any ends at all, but her site is more of a portfolio. Yeah. <coughs> um, but it plays so my DNA right, it's nice, sorry. All right, different kinds of cons and which one to choose. Uh, well, you guys all apparently love anime because you're at Or you're here. Yeah, and the yeah. 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 sometimes fun. Um, actually, this con is, is kind of an everything con. Yeah. Kind of an everything con. Yeah. Market is an anime con, everybody comes. Um, so, anime cons. I'm, I'm assuming you guys know at least a little bit about them since you're Uh, yes, some are freaking 
have to work together yeah. as best we can.
got to Zen and lost the key. So Heidi was able to jerry rig it, which what did you use to poke the, uh, the hinge out? I don't know why, but I had a tiny drill bit, and you just take the drill bit, click, pull out the pin, and you open it right up. We're telling you guys this as a note, it is not secure, and it took her like five minutes to do that, and nobody would have I have no love for you, Do not leave your money at your table if you can. Yeah. Um, uh, you want to take it. Trust me, you'll need it. For Always take Probably not to take uh, Sharpies and pens, uh, display materials, scratch paper, you'll use it for something. Medicine, uh, you, I've got so many headaches. And, um, allergy medicines, I'm allergic to cigarettes, so I always need that allergy medicine. Uh, rolling suitcase, something, oh. to, yeah, sorry, something to carry all this stuff in because it's, it's too heavy to just hold it and be like, wait for the elevator.
a lot cheaper. Like this ultimate, this convention is in, it was like what, 125 a night at the con block rate? It was 342 when I called them three or four weeks ago with my Hilton Honors card. Yeah, con block is so much cheaper, but you gotta get it early. What's up? No, we, we are not tax 
seen things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to double check everything on the internet and then call our mommies and, okay, so whatever we say, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, double check it. We are not the authority on this. Uh, we will not stand up in legal court and be like, oh, they said, I'm not giving them any tax advice. They just pay your taxes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, how much do you charge? There's, um, there's a lot of people upstairs with posters, and you'll see anywhere from five dollars to like five dollars. Um, nobody's wrong on this. It, it's always how much time you put into it, how much you get your prints made for, you know. And then some of it is, oh well, you know, I want to charge five bucks. That seems reasonable. Um, I want to charge fifteen because that's what my time is worth. Um, so it's, it's not something that you like, this is a set of price for this size print. Uh, it's, it's experience. I, I found 15 for me always seemed fair to me and to people buying. So that's how much I charge. And it, it's everyone's, um, everyone's discretion. Um, your, your big important thing is to cover the cost of materials that you're making. You don't want to be losing money because you, you're, you know, you buy, like say, the fleece, you buy, you make a fleece tail, you make the tail, it costs, you know, three dollars to make the fleece tail, you sell it for a dollar. Wait a minute, you're actually losing money to do this. You want to make sure you're at least charging three dollars and charging for your time. So six dollars, maybe ten. With that, if you have stock that you may and it's not selling, and you've taken it to three cons, lower it. We do a little bigger on this sometimes. Dead stock is not doing you any favors, so it's paying the house. Yeah, oh, well, better get rid of it than just have it. Make it a bundle. People like bargains. Surprise box. People love those. <laughs> yeah, real. Um, and every con is gonna have a different fair price. Um, uh, DashCon actually was amazing because I did have um, things and no one came and handled me. They're like, three dollars for a bookmark? That's so expensive. No one, I got it on a cost. Conversely, when I did FWA, they were giving me serious side eye because they thought my prices were too cheap because they didn't even spend any money on their artists. But I've done enough anime cons where if I'm at an anime con, I can't raise my prices higher than this because it won't move. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons thinking that's great. You can be like, oh, whoa. Um, and again, I talked about higher profit margins to be right up there front. Oh, that's beautiful. I want this. Um, and there's there's my price signs. Uh, sometimes people read them like, oh, those are pretty. How much is this? this? <laughs> <laughs> Keep track of what you sell. She's actually the one who got me started on doing this. Um, but just write down what you sell, even if it's just you know twenty five dollars a poster. I say write down specifically what you're selling, not only for restock purposes, but to know what your market, what your audience likes, what they're looking for, makes more in a similar vein. Mm -hmm. Low-key posters, yes. shirtless low-key posters. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this I do you know, your expenses can be business and tax write-offs. So when you pay 500 for a hotel and you're going to do your, your taxes, and it says, you know, I made one thousand dollars at this con. Oh, but wait, I spent five hundred dollars on the hotel, eighty dollars on food, a hundred dollars on gas. Okay, now you made three hundred fifty dollars at this con, and that is a different taxable amount than a thousand. So keep track, of, keep your receipts, keep track of what you um, spend on things, uh, keep track of how you split it up between people, um, because. That, that is something that the U.S. government is going to have to find it, yeah. <laughs> We'd really like to know. Mm -hmm. And then there's always going to be things you can and can't control it at times. Um, let's talk about the weather. So, I don't like Ohio. I'm from New Orleans. Heidi's like, come to Ohio, come with me. It'll be great. I've done this in the past. I go, there's a blizzard <laughs> that weekend. I'm from St. Charles Parish. Where it snows once every 10 years and it's like this much and it melts. Like, kids get really, really excited when it sleeps. You know? And this is a blizzard. And I don't even have the clothes for it. I'm like, I'm getting like six sweaters just to get from the car into the convention set. In total, I was like, never again, I hate Ohio. And yet, crazy enough, OhioCon was bonkers packed. Those kids were seriously dedicated to their animals. They're cosplayers. They're cosplayers. They spend oh, a lot of money on those cosplayers. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, I'm like, that wasn't a blizzard shirt. It actually was. It, it was, was uh, really uh, It got down to negative 30 with the chill. Yeah. That. I've never yeah. been so cold. I'm, I'm from the north. I'm like, that's freaking 
freezing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Um, where you're located at the con, some more popular artists do have enough sway to request that they be moved to a different location. I am not one of them. Where I am is generally where I am. I will only request to be moved if there's two empty tables next to me, because that is a dead zone and that is bad news. You do not want to be in the dead zone because people will not make yeah. it to you. There's yeah. empty tables near you, people will tend to not even go down that aisle. That's aisle. right. Um, that's unfortunately kind of a problem upstairs this year. Uh, enough people didn't show up that there's actual dead areas, and there will be like one artist down there, and people will just be like, eh. Somewhere else. It looks more lively over there. Sometimes staff would be proactive and request that artists move. Sometimes they'll respect that the artist may have spent all this time setting up and may not want to go to that hassle. Heidi moved because uh, the table next to me evacuated because she got a, a table in the dealer's room. So I was like, Heidi, come over. It's going to be dead zone and it's right there in the front. That is bad news for everyone in that area. Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, except we're both so busy we can't talk at all. Can affect the economy. Uh, my audience skews young. If daddies and mommies don't have money to give to their kids, I don't get paid. That's just how it is. If daddies and mommies don't want to have their kids at the con, that's yeah. just how it is. If a con is $100 to get in, and there are cons like that, that's your con to get paid. Because <laughs> um, when you're competing with parking and attendance, in entrance attendance, and expensive food, the artist alley is always first to take a hit. Yeah. Um, things you can control. A positive attitude. After a uh, 14-hour day like today, it is hard to be like, yay, yeah. So if you need to leave your table and take a break, do it. I was being so crowded at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Me and our table monkey went and took a walk about, and I came back feeling 100% better. People will buy from you because you're nice. Uh, even if they're like, oh, I'm, I'm so so about your art. People, if you're mean and they like your art, you're not, you may not like where you're at online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or yeah, they, they can do that stuff on Google. Um, so people are supporting you as an artist when you're there. When you're you part of the product. Stuff. Again, don't let people be disrespectful to you. Yeah. You don't have to sell yourself to sell your art. I get a lot of people who want to stop right in front because I'm right by the entrance and take cosplay photos. It is, it's very you hard. have every right to photo bomb, and we need to make that happen. <laughs> I didn't have. 
Um, some days you just gotta roll with it. And lovely resources that are also on our handouts. And like I said, I, I hope you guys haven't, haven't bored you guys to death. We're both very tired. Um, we're glad you guys came. We're sure you're very tired too. We really appreciate so many of you sticking with us yeah. and being fantastic and laughing at my yeah. terrible jokes. Thank you for not falling asleep on us. Or if you did, being quiet about it. Appreciate <laughs> that too. Okay, so we're a little bit over, but if any of you have questions, yeah, after us. So. I know, but we do have to pack up. Okay, so if any of you have any questions, now would be the time. If you, hey, what's up? How, how do you? Because you're talking about saying I'd like to finish commissions. How do you figure out how many you're willing to take? I'm learning. <laughs> uh, that's another reason why I don't take the watercolor commissions. That are. I'm going to have to stop taking commissions to be completed in watercolor at conventions, especially in the South, because I can't control the weather. And sometimes they'll dry quick, and sometimes they take four hours for a single wash to dry. I, did, I had to text people last night and explain the situation to them, and thank goodness all of them were understanding and allowed me to convert it to mail-in, which I absorbed that cost. Um, otherwise, my commissions are just like graphite and um, blue lead sketch. Unfortunately for me, the tighter I am, the longer it's going to take me to do things. Um, sometimes I have to just go to bed and wake up the next morning and knock them out of the table because I would be there early for opening. They probably won't roll in, especially if the race tonight or the balls tonight. They're probably not going to roll in until about one, so I can maybe finish their commissions the next morning. You can't always count on that, though. I love her, and I've stayed up with her until like she's four in the morning, and then it's just like, I can't do this with my back. And then my excuse for going to sleep is, but my, my roommate needed to sleep. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's your roommate won't work anyway. Way. What's up? How do you deal with customers interrupting you helping other customers? Because I've had about five times just today where somebody would run up to tell me they like my costume or ask me to do something else or add on to the list while I'm in the process of talking to somebody and regardless of what I do, I lose whoever I was right. talking to. I, I don't know, man, that's, um, I don't wear costumes at the table anymore. I used to be a cosplayer. I didn't do that at the table anymore. Um, generally, what I will say is, I'll get to you in a minute, or I'm not ignoring you. Let me just finish with this person first. Nice, normal people will appreciate that and respect that. Impulsive, young, wonderful people may not. You might lose them. Hopefully, you can keep the sale that you had going. Um, one of my rules of thumb is the sale isn't completed until the money is in your hand. And that, oh man, you will learn that at anime cons because they're so easily distracted or so easily <laughs> turned off. I, I feel for you, it's something I struggle with too. I try to be polite about it. What happens to me more though is someone will interrupt my sale to creep on me, which then I'm like not so nice about. Oh. Um, what do you do? Um, it is kind of a, yeah, um, hey, hey, I'll be with you in a second. Um, yeah, it, having, it, having a table assistant who can handle them, ha, ah, the best. Mm -hmm. And it, there's nothing, I think sometimes I'll help her or she'll help yeah. me. I think it's a little bit more rage to the person you're handing something to, to be like, oh, you're not important enough for me to stay with you longer than two seconds. So, I, the person you're helping first, I think, is going to come first. Yeah, but these people are interrupting. And I've had people like, yeah. kind of pushy, right? It's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, can I take a picture? Yeah. I'm okay. sorry. It's, it's up to you. <laughs> if, when you're at your table, it depends on why you're at your table. If you're at your table for business business, then you can say, I'm sorry, I have to finish this. If you're there at the con, just to have a good time and to, to enjoy yourself, then that's up to you. I mean, having been a cosplayer, I know how hard it is, how hard working on costumes can be. I've burnt that midnight oil, and I know how good it feels when people know who you are and they want a picture. You could even consider setting aside a certain amount of time and saying, look, if you come back in 15 minutes, I'll be all clear, I'll save that time for you. I wish you luck. If you find something that works, let me know. Thank you. Hey, what's up? So, um... I like to talk a lot. <laughs> so I like to talk to my customers. Um, what happens when somebody buys something and they're being awesome and they were a terrific customer and they want to talk to you for the next 
15 minutes and you have like a line Ooh. and every time you try to like be like hi um how can i help you the other person just like kind of moves in front of the other person yeah. How do you do? Oh, no. And you don't want to. You want to turn them off. And you want to be rude to the customers. And you drop every hint. Like, okay, I hope you enjoy yourself. Um, we struggle with this. Yeah. Too. Sometimes I would just start doing the other transactions. I know. I know it's rude, but they're also being rude by interrupting these transactions. You're a business person in this instance. You're here to work. You're here to make money. Um. And you sometimes do have to be a little assertive, like, yeah, I'm sorry, can you, you know, this is my busy yeah. time, this is a rush, if you come back later, if you want to talk to them, if you come back later, I can get yeah. to you. If you figure something out like that, yeah. <laughs> you had a question? Um, sort of adding on to that, I uh, work at a hospital, and a lot of times a patient will come up to me, and they'll, and while talking to another patient, it's sort of the same thing, mm -hmm. and usually, like, do be assertive, but be really polite. Like say, I'm really, really sorry. Mm -hmm. I really have to help this person mm -hmm. right now. You know, I'll, I'll just if you wait there, I'll get back to you later. Mm -hmm. I really have to help this person. Mm -hmm. and as long as you're nice about it, you can be assertive, and, and most normal people will, will mm -hmm. be like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> most normal people. I'm not disagreeing with that at all. But man, sometimes we get the ones who do not get hands. That's not normal. That's why you have to yeah, drop the, 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 the answer to say, not you just say it. It's, it's yeah. just, it, there have been points at times where I had to stop dropping the hints and be like, hey, I, I, I need, need to, to make fair. sales. I, I just, I start mentioning the bills yeah. I have to pay. It's like, look, I got the bills to pay. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're so good. You know, you must have a lot of fun doing this. If I wish I had fun, I'm like, you know, like, yeah, and I spent, you know, $120,000 at art. Often. <laughs> um, if I really do like the person, I'll say, hey, you should talk to me online. You can email me. I'll be happy to chat there because I won't be at a con. I'll be in a good mood. Um, I'd like to add a tip for if you're, tra if you're doing the flight. Because mm -hmm. my husband, he actually travels a lot for his work. Mm -hmm. And they actually mail things yeah, that's to the hotel. Idea. They just UPS it or FedEx it to the hotel. And they have it there waiting for you, so you don't have to pay all the right. it's all bad bad. fees. My question is, though, how expensive is that? Because I mean, it's more than the 50 that it's not worth it. Yeah, it depends and, on how the weight. Yeah, you know? and, and how reliable. I mean, because I'm always nervous when they drive my hands. <laughs> oh, I understand completely. <laughs> this is why I drive. It's like control <laughs> Well, usually, like things like F UPS or FedEx, you can get a copy of it. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, I mean, what if, you know, you've got things and you send them off and they don't arrive on the time? Uh -huh. I don't know, I need mean, to get a flat on the way to the next. No, it's just a checklist this one. Yeah. Oh. 